Hi guys, I'm Mike from The Last Corvette, and I um, want to do a little video um, about how I acquired, um, you know, that black Corvette that I keep uh, recording, right? So, I've been looking for one for a C5 or C6, one of my favorite um, uh, models for, got four or five years. Um... I used to be really into cars, had a, um, a custom accessory business uh, years and years ago. So C5 and C6 was was probably the you know the best um, design or or model um, to me anyway. So started looking and got I through auctions and, and and private sales and everything. I was almost actually almost bought a. Uh, a 70s Corvette, which was pretty cool. We had a 427 um, carburetor big block. Um, but, um, you know, after three plus years of searching, finally found this black one in Oklahoma. Um, it was a, you know, one owner um, uh, Oklahoma car. Did the Carfax on and everything else. It was at an auction, I would imagine, for repo or who knows. Who knows what the issue was. I know that the same owner had, or I should say it's the same name, had a Harley and a Corvette uh, being auctioned off um, at the same time. So this vehicle actually sat um, at a auction yard for about six months. So it was like late winter into summer, and, and I, I got it delivered August 30th. That's when it actually arrived in Michigan from Oklahoma. So I only got to drive it for a couple months, and like I said, we've been videotaping all these issues that are coming up, <laughs> but they're common issues with these Corvettes. Anyway, so this is how it went down. I bid on it. I get it. It's listed as run and drive. Everything's perfect, and there's, there's certain things that you can look at when you're looking at an auction car because I do buy and sell cars on the side. Uh, I've been doing it for years. You know, like, uh, obviously, the the gauge positions are like your RPM gauge needle position. Was it at zero, or was it actually running when they took the picture? Which, in this case, it was. Um, so, anyway, I win the bid. Got it for a, a real good, you know, real good price. You know, with auction fees and, and uh, transfer uh, fees, and then, obviously, transport fees. Regardless, way, probably one of the cheapest... Um, C6 is around. Um, not going to share the actual information of what I paid for it just because, you know, um, well, it's not right. I, I believe in my mind. <clears throat> so regardless, I call one of my buddies. He owns a logistics company. I said, hey, can you please get this Oklahoma uh, vehicle over to Michigan? Okay. And okay. he said, well, he goes, just happens to have a truck sitting in Oklahoma right now, Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's where it came from. Um, he goes with some GM vehicles going back to Michigan for the holiday. He goes, we're going to put it on. I said, okay. I told him, please give me a call when the vehicle is loaded. I just want to make sure it's in one piece, starts, runs, and drives, and whatever, because it was listed. And normally, when you buy a vehicle uh, from an auction or whatever and use a transport company, they don't give you the driver's phone number unless there's an emergency um, or um, they'll give it to you maybe like within the last 24 hours of the delivery. But most of the time they, uh, uh, you know, they call um, and within like, you know, 12 to 24 hours and say, okay, this is the time frame or the time slot we're going to deliver this vehicle, being wherever. So anyway, being that this was his actual driver, he gives me his phone number. He goes, yeah, he goes, he's a cool guy. Just give him a call, uh, you know, after he picks up. So... I'm looking, looking, looking through the uh, throughout the day, and I see the vehicle got picked up, got released to the driver. Never got a call from him. So I called him a few times, left him a message, nothing. So it took two days for this vehicle to get transported to Michigan from Oklahoma. So anyway, long story short, I finally get a call from him. And I'm like, hey, you know, how's it going? You know, I'm pretty excited. I said, how's the C, uh, C6? And he goes, well, he goes... It looks good. He goes, it's all there. He goes, but uh, these the high low to uh, load it onto my uh, trailer, <laughs> onto the car hauler. So right up, right away, you know, I'm, uh, you know, 
brain is, you know, ticking. I'm trying to figure out what in the world because it was listed as a run and drive. So he said, yeah, he goes, you're going to need a high-low to, um, uh, to get this thing off my trailer because it's parked or staged in the middle. <laughs> there's a vehicle behind the Corvette and there's one uh, in front of it. He goes, you're going to need a high-low to get this thing off my trailer. And I said, well, that's not possible because you're going to deliver it to my house. I said, but what we can do is one of my best friends works for a, a GM dealer. So, you know, we can get a, a, a key made and everything else. So this is why it went so cheap. When it was at the auction, it was listed as a uh, run and drive. The C6s um, are known to drain the battery, especially if they're old batteries, you know, two plus years old. And then the battery that was in it was very old. So what happened is they took all these pictures, uh, the mileage and everything else. And that thing sat there for months um, because, well, probably they had to clear the paperwork or whatever. So when it came time to actually put it through the block, it never drove through the block. Uh, they list it as a questionable now run and drive um, to the to the public that attended dealers and whoever else. Um, and what happened is the keys got locked in uh, in the Corvette. And we all know that if you don't have a hard key, uh, you're screwed if the battery dies and you can't uh, open uh, the trunk. <laughs> so that's, this is what happened here. So the keys were zip tied to the steering column, normal procedure at a car auction. So that's what happened. They couldn't get inside the car. So anyway, so I, I, I tell him, I said, not a big deal. Call my buddy. I said, let's, can we cut a key uh, for this Corvette? And uh, he does. So I have a spare key, bought a battery. I said, at least I can attempt to tr you know, try to start it uh, and, uh, and, or either at least roll it off the trailer with a battery and a key. Now I can gain access to the vehicle. And I knew there was a fob there because the driver told me so, but I did ask him, I said, is there any way, I said, I know you have GM vehicles, I said, is there any way you can go to a GM dealership, or when you go to a GM dealership, is there any way you can ask those guys to jump the vehicle um, and um, get unlocked so you can get the keys out? So he did. He went to a GM dealership, he was dropping off the two GM vehicles he had on, um, and they were able to get under, because it was already on the car hauler, under the vehicle, right where the starter is, the main power, put a jumper on there, and they got enough juice to where he could open the door, cut the zip tie, get the key fob. Then he put his booster box on it and the thing fired right up. So then he called me the following day with the good news. He said it started um, and it runs great, no issues. He goes, I don't know if it drives. He goes, it does go into gear, but that was a win-win for me. So that's kind of a backdrop of how I got this vehicle, what I had to go through. Um, and even when it got delivered to Michigan, I had to actually climb on top of the trailer and change the battery out um, uh, before we could even unload it because the battery's still dead. So anyway, that is, in a nutshell, the whole story behind this black C6A6. Um, and uh, so she was, a, she was a tough cookie from the start, and she's still being a tough cookie, but we'll get her looking nice. She'll be one of the pristine C6s out on the road, and eventually we'll get the horsepower up there to where she's going to be a, a true sleeper because I'm not trying to... At, at one point, I ended up thinking I'm going to get some, you know, maybe black wheels, or I might, I might still do that. But I think we're going to keep everything stock looking. That's why I don't want to whipple. I don't want to put a cowl induction hood on it. I want to keep everything stock until the power actually gets unleashed and catches people by surprise. I already raced a, uh, I already raced a, um, it was a, uh, a Charger Hellcat, and I beat them so that's why i think this vehicle does have a tune even though it just has bolt-on you know stuff but i did beat them uh i ran them so um we'll make more videos next set of videos are going to be more in depth i'm not just going to show the car i'm actually going to show how to do things uh how to wire things and um we'll start with the putting the back uh the, the rear bumper back on uh and the camera and everything else so i have tons of uh, videos that I want to do and it's only going to get better as we progress and actually get this thing back on the road because right now it's winter. We'll talk to you later.